Hi, I'm Six Five Mom, and I want to continue in the series that I started a couple weeks ago, which is does socialism line up with the Bible? And I'm not doing this from a political perspective, but from a scriptural perspective. I am passionate about the Word of God, and I want to make sure that it is used properly and that the people who are using it understand what it truly means. So I've gone across several passages of scripture over the last couple of years that people have used saying, oh, this supports socialism. And the one we're looking at today is the rich young ruler, which I have seen um, put out there as a support of uh, redistribution of wealth. So let's look at that passage, which is found in Matthew 19, verses 16 through 26. And here's the six, five mom paraphrase. This young man comes up to Jesus and says, what one good thing do I need to do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus says to him, well, you know, don't commit murder, honor your mom and dad, don't commit adultery, etc." And the young man goes, I've done all those things. And so Jesus looks at him and says, okay, there's one more thing you can do. And the young man's like, cool, what? And Jesus says, sell everything that you own and give it to the poor. And it says the young man goes away sad because he owned many things. So even if we were just looking at this on the total surface, right at the top, the total surface of this, we cannot say that it lines up with redistribution wealth. I know it sounds like it, but you can't just take God's word out and look at it in a microcosm. You have to compare it not only with the whole of the passage, but the whole of scripture. And if you look at the whole of the New Testament and things Jesus said, Jesus never told anybody else to do this. This was the only person he said this to. So even if what Jesus was talking about was the guy selling everything he owned, it was still something just for this young man. It was not a statement for everybody else or other believers or other followers of Jesus Christ. It was just for that young man. But in truth, this passage isn't about money at all. So let's look at it again. You have to remember that in those days, uh, people were used to following the law. And they got to think of the law as a list of actions. And if I follow these list of actions, I'm going to be righteous. And I'm going to, you know, in the case of the young man, I'll inherit eternal life if I follow these actions. But the truth is, and what Jesus came to show us, was that it's not our actions at all. It's our heart. It's our sin nature that causes the problems. And he pointed this out by saying things like, um, you've been told, do not murder. But I say, if you hate a brother in your heart, you've already committed murder. So Jesus takes our actions and takes them to the heart issue, not the behavior. So in this case, we've got this young man who's saying, I've got it all going on. I've done all these things. That means I'm righteous. But Jesus, in the way only he can, cuts through all of that and goes, here's your heart problem. Sell everything you own. Because he's not talking about the man's possessions or him selling them. No, he's talking about the man's the man's heart that valued and worshipped his possessions, that adored them more than he adored God. So in this case, it's about the young man's heart. It's not about what he's doing at all. And then if you're like, well, I don't know if that's really what he's talking about. He goes on with his disciples and drives this point home. That's why I say you can't take it out. You got to look in context. So he's going with his disciples and he says, I say, it is harder for a rich man to get through the eye of the camel or the eye of the needle, get a camel through the eye of the needle. Now I've got it all messed up than it is for a rich man to get into heaven. That's how it is. And his disciples are astonished when he says this, because in those days it was believed that if you were rich, that meant God had blessed you and you had favor with him and you were righteous. So when Jesus says, yeah, it's about as easy as getting a camel through the eye of the needle as a rich man getting into heaven. The disciples are thinking, then who can get into heaven? If the ones we know as the most righteous can't get in, then who can? And Jesus says, no one can. Again, my paraphrase. It's impossible for man, but it is possible with God. 
And in this case, Jesus is talking about that we on our own are completely unable of achieving righteousness, of achieving forgiveness of our sins. We cannot do all the right actions and have eternal life. No, the only way it is possible, as Jesus points out, is through God. It is through Jesus, who was fully God and fully man, dying on the cross, making that sacrifice for us, fulfilling the law and the curses of the law, taking on the wages of our sin with his death. That is how it is possible. Nobody can achieve it on our own. So when you look at the rich young ruler, it has nothing to do with money or wealth or even poverty, but it has everything to do with our sin nature and with our hearts and being right with God and about salvation. I'll be continuing to talk on this topic for at least one more week. And I hope that you have a great week. If you leave comments, please keep them kind and clean. Thank you.